It says open your mouth. Oh, what happens when you open your mouth? I'm vomiting a rainbow. <laughs> this is going to be my new thing, guys. I'm going to start every um, live stream with a... What is that? A different filter. You look cute. Well, you know, I got a good filter. <laughs> it's so pretty. You know, it's your love for me that makes me this pretty. I'm gonna have one, you take it on now? Uh-huh. You pour a ring right out of your mouth. Right now. That doesn't happen. It's just for you. Okay, good. Maybe if you just open it up so you can work. Hi! What's up, Ashley? What's up, everybody? I don't know. I actually don't know if I know how to turn this off, so um, <clears throat> I'm gonna be real serious for a second. I wanna talk to you guys about something serious. Um, I actually have a hat on. <laughs> 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 Looks the same. <laughs> we have some friends here with us. I want to introduce you. This is Paul. <laughs> what is Paul? Get a filter? He did. Yeah. Hi, Paul. And this is his wife, Maggie. Look at that. You guys are super cool. I didn't yeah. do it. Happy Mother's Day to oh, you. Okay. Lacey. Oh, Happy Mother's Day to you. Oh my gosh. Hi, everybody. Atticus, you are so cute. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay, let me see if I can turn this off, honestly. Uh, it's going to be my new thing, guys. There we go. Hi, I'm not as fun, but let's here we are. We can be more fun than that, right? Um, so, yeah, so we have some friends with us, Paul and Maggie. We met Paul and Maggie. Um, we met Paul and Maggie in Florida, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. We were at a conference um, down in Florida in St. Petersburg, right? Yep. Yeah. And we met them down there. They live in Charlotte. This is one of their little kiddos. Evangeline. That's Evangeline. Hi. Hi. Oh, you're so pretty. Yeah. She's a doggie. So they have three daughters. Um, actually, I think. Did our kids meet first? Probably. Yeah. yeah so Joshua, together. yeah, Joshua and uh, Arrow were playing with their kids while we were at this conference, and then um, we got to meet Me them. Maggie were becoming friends, and then we found out our kids were already friends. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's but they live so in lovely. Charlotte, and so we got to stay with them when we were passing through one time. North Carolina in the house. Ooh. Summer young blood says. Um, yeah, and so they're actually up here in uh, Pittsburgh right now, and they're staying with us. So Maggie has done the Reflect Low Back study. It's you awesome. guys might have seen her on here. She always signs in and has, uh, I think, left a quote on our site too, I believe, right? I think so. Yeah. So this is Maggie. And then uh, <laughs> and Atticus. Hey, everybody. He's drinking no, no, a bottle no, no. right now. That's new. OK, so I wanted to talk to you guys today about what we talked about today. We had a happy Mother's Day. Did we? <laughs> we had a weird, hard Mother's Day. Well, I don't know. It was, it was, it was happy a couple times today. <laughs> Lacey's not in the holidays. I mean. She says Mother's Day is a, never mind, I don't want to ruin it for you. Greeting card, greeting card holiday, right? Greeting card holiday. We made yeah. it up, right? I, yeah, I, I agree. I mean. Every day is Mother's Day. Should be. <laughs> and, father, and Father's Day. Well, the only thing. And Thanksgiving. The reason why it came up was because Josh right? was like, Josh was like, I woke up and I was like, where's my breakfast in bed? Where's my cards? Where's my. Flowers. Stuff, you know? <laughs> and I don't know, you know, if you guys, maybe some of you might have a nine month old baby or 10 month old baby at home and haven't slept in a year. But, um, <laughs> but the thing is, <laughs> You know, sometimes it's just all you want is to sleep. And you always have to make that choice in these times of life where you have to like, oh, should I sleep? Should I bathe? Should I read the Bible? Should I clean the kitchen? Should I, what should I do? <laughs> anyway, so it was, a, it was a moment where I was like, I really don't want you to mess up the kitchen and make me food and all that. I just want to rest and... Josh wanted it to be something special for me, and the way that he wanted to help me really didn't feel helpful. 
And so, <laughs> and my heart was just like, look, it's just a holiday. It's just, it's just a holiday they made up. I know you love me. Don't worry about it. So we ended up getting a, in an argument about it. Pretty, pretty fierce at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I think part of the reason why it was so hard is because I haven't slept in like a week. Yeah. Which that wasn't really going to be part of my gift was to let her sleep. <laughs> Take everybody out of the house so she can sleep. But he, he's teasing right now. That's probably why. Yeah. But the thing is, what we want to talk to you about is this idea that, um, you know, sometimes we, we, we have this idealized idea of things, the way things should go, and the way somebody, the kind of gift we want to give somebody, and the way somebody should respond to that gift, and... And in the end, what we really just want to say is we love each other. Yeah. And the truth is we do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And Josh really does appreciate me. I know that. I did not want to fight on Mother's Day. It's like the worst Mother's Day present you can give. <laughs> no, it's To have not. an argument. <laughs> but it's, but the thing is, it's just another day in my mind. And it's, and you were just trying to do something that you thought was traditionally expected. And... And I was trying to just accommodate your ability to give me a present, even though I didn't really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. So it wasn't really a present, you know what I mean? So in the end, no, I think I think what what we ended up doing that was really helpful for me, and I think for a lot of um, maybe moms, it's just great when we can reevaluate our priorities and just figure out our vision again, and just say, hey, is are we putting God first? Are we putting our marriage? Under that, are you putting our yeah. kids under that? And where does ministry fall? Do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, sure. Um, so we learned this. Did we learn it at the same time, or did we <laughs> learn it independently? I don't know. I'm actually not even sure where the scripture is for this, but um, maybe Lacey can help you there. Um, but we have a, I guess, a hierarchy that we've followed ever since we've been married. Um, it's, I wouldn't say it has evolved, but there's things in there now that are relevant that weren't whenever we were first married um, because we didn't have kids when we first got married um, but our general template for life is our Secret goal life. Listen, write this down Just everybody get your pencils <laughs> everybody get your pencils and write this down um, our template for what we try to do every single day and I say try to do so that's part of what our argument was about is this wasn't hasn't been in that in place for it doesn't matter if it's a day, a week, a month, whatever it is. It's as soon as it gets out of order, we tend to have problems. But it's first and foremost your relationship with Jesus. Um, Personally, your personal relationship with Jesus. Because when you die, there's not going to be your best friend or anyone standing next to you. It's going to be you and Jesus talking, you know. And so cultivating your own personal relationship every single day and growing. This is what Reflect Low Back is a big thing for. Hey Frank, I love you. I miss your mom. Hi, darling. I know you do too. I love you, buddy. Um, but yeah, so your personal relationship oh, yeah, is right. the most important thing to, cul to cultivate. Um, in that same category, if you're married, um, is your relationship and connecting spiritually with your wife or spouse. Um, I think that uh, that's something Lacey and I have had a hard time with, you know, complete transparency because we are running a reflect love back which is a ministry in a lot of ways and we're trying to show you guys how to model things well there's a lot of times we're not doing so good ourselves in those areas and so like it's a time where we have to reevaluate what are we spending our time on what are we what are our priorities and that was also what we were having a hard time with today is just because Lacey not feeling the covering of me as a husband and leading her to Jesus and um, just yeah. being I'm I'm putting I'm I'm well, putting it in my own words. Well, he's taking responsibility in a in a nice way for what I was well, saying. Well, so that's why I said your personal. I'm not, when you, when Lacey wasn't. dies, she's not gonna be like, hey, let me right. get my husband. I wasn't right. Mm -hmm. When you're married, you two have become one flesh, and you're one. And so there is in that same category of <clears throat> this hierarchy that I'm talking about. First and foremost, your own personal yeah. relationship, but you should be growing together spiritually, and the husband should be leading his wife in that way too. Yes, um, I just want to say... Go ahead, you can clarify. I just want to say, you know, again, like he was saying, he said he did a great job saying, you know, it's it's between me and, you know, I, I will stand before the Lord about my relationship with Jesus, but sometimes I feel like when he, I don't have time to, to come to the Lord the way that I would like to, 
Um, and a lot of times, like, like if Josh wants to bless me, he may want to make me breakfast, and I would rather him just make space for me to meet with Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, can he just help me to get there or just read the Bible to me or something like that? Because I'm tired and I'm hungry and my spirit's hungry, you know, and I just, you know, something. Um, and so, it, but it's not his responsibility still. Even in that, we have to find, well, okay, I might not be able to look at the Bible right now, but what is this baby teaching me? <laughs> and there's a lot there. God does speak to us and remind us of the scriptures that we've, we've put into our spirits over the years through our relationship with our kids so much. And so just crying out to God can do that. But, you know, being on the same page about what our needs are, um, that they're first and foremost the Lord, like you said. Yeah. Let me go through the whole hierarchy and then I'll okay, highlight sorry. some of the things because I think it's I spread it out too far. Okay, Thank I'm you sorry. for saying that. I'm sorry. I'm okay, sorry. top of the list. Number one, your personal relationship with God, with Jesus. And then if you're married, that should be in the same category, but you're, you and your wife cultivating together. Right below that is your family, your direct children, which for us it's Joshua, Arrow, and Atticus. Those are our kids. They're a priority. Um, after that comes your um, your ministry which is a lot of people can get backwards. You know, I think pastors deal with this the most where they're like constantly busy at church and can put their ministry, you know, ministering to other people over top of your family and your personal relationship. When you do that, families fall apart. Pastor's kids, you hear a lot about pastor's kids because a lot of them feel like they're neglected. Like they're, even pastor's wives feel neglected because they feel like, hey, you're ministering to everybody else in the building except for me. Can you just talk to me like you talked to that lady over there? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's, uh, listen, that's a very real thing. It's like, yeah, our, our pastor said that one time uh, at a church we were going to, and he was saying his wife was just just straight out said, I wish that you looked at and put as, gave as much attention to me as you did the other women in the church. And he, she wasn't saying it in a way that was like... You're looking at the other women. Looking at other women, but like there's something that happens when you're in church and someone's like, Pastor, can I talk to you about something? I need, to, I need you to pray for me. And then you take time to pray for them because that's what pastors do. But if your wife later says, hey, can we do this? He's like, I'm sorry, I'm busy. You don't usually hear a pastor tell someone, hey, I'm busy, I can't right now, or I have something else that I need that's more important. And also to say, you know, the respect that people give to the pastors... Don't always doesn't always translate from a wife to a husband either, you know. So a wife doesn't always a husband may not feel as honored and respected um, by his wife as he does by somebody maybe in the church. But yeah. But um. But it so it's that cycle, you know, the love and respect cycle, you know. So. Yeah. Ashley said, I think it's very smart to put your marriage second and your children third because if your marriage isn't strong, then your whole family could completely crumble. That's absolutely right, Ashley. <laughs> And if you don't put God first, then your marriage will crumble. So that's why it's set up that way. You need to be right with God so that you can love your wife. You need to love your wife so you can love your children. You need to love your wife and children and God so that you can love others. If you try to do it any other direction, it really doesn't work. You can't minister to people. You can't have a ministry and minister to people when you can't minister to your wife. And so that's the... A lot of you guys are saying thank you for your transparency as we're talking about this. We're a lot of times feel like we have it completely backwards, you know, where we're ministering to other people but my wife feels like she might be neglected I'm not ministering yeah. to her and so again being being very real that's something that we're continuing to try to evaluate and fix whenever we can bye Hannah thanks for coming to stay or for a little bit well I also want to say you know what what happens with the normal thing the reason why this is so um, so interesting to have to keep continuously revisit it shouldn't be it shouldn't be um, surprising or discouraging if you have to revisit this over and over again. It should be uh, a normal thing that you do um, because if you put your fam uh, the Lord first and you put your marriage second, your kid, your relationship with the kids will get better. Or if you put God first, your relationship, your wife will get better. You put your marriage first, your kid, your relationship with your kids will get stronger because you're on the same team. And then you're, after you put your kids first, your ministry will just flow and it will get so. You know, you continue to have stuff to minister through. You have, you have, um, you have things you didn't even realize you you knew to help people through, because your kids are always teaching you how to grow in your, and it just it becomes the cycle. So, what happens is, you you can even develop a ministry because you're doing this well, 
And then once you develop the ministry, the temptation is that you turn towards the ministry, and then the reservoir for how you got there is dried up if you don't yeah. turn back to the um, to the priority, the priority and order again. So it should be that, that cycle that you keep on revisiting. Yeah. And so this is where we were this morning. We revisited yeah. this idea and said, what does it look like when you put God first? Well, sometimes it means I'm shutting the door to my... I know this sounds stupid, but I really, I really do sit in my closet and um, talk to God. So I shut my closet door and I listened to the baby cry for a while and I just talked to God. <laughs> and that looks like me putting God first in some ways. And sometimes it looks like me walking out of an argument and going into my closet, which happened today, <laughs> and trying to to um, just talk to God um, instead of trying to put my husband in that place. And and so it means saying no sometimes. Yeah. And, and like... And it means saying yes when God says things, like whispers to you. You need to get up earlier this morning and come meet with me. And so, or you need to stay up later and meet with me. You know, whatever it is, that's that saying yes to putting him in a, in a priority. And then whenever, it's the same with your kids in your marriage. Like, we did that um, today as well. Josh came into the, my closet with me and we worked on our argument while the kids were just continuously trying to get our attention but we were like we need to work on ourselves so there was this moment of saying no to them and putting our marriage first and that really blessed my kids yeah. and um and then also being able to put the phone down and say i know that so and so needs us but our kids need us right now when we say no to other people in front of our kids especially when it's ministry that really speaks that they're important and so that's really an important moment for them well even in this you guys might be asking the question, are you neglecting Atticus right now by doing a live stream? <laughs> That's why Atticus is here with us. I was talking to Paul before we started. You know, when we started Reflect Love Back, we wanted everything to be based off the family. And so, mm -hmm. if we are doing what we normally do as a family, which we are right now, we're getting ready to eat something and hanging out with our friends and talking to you guys, um, we are using our time with our children to hopefully minister to you guys as well. You know, we're not neglecting them to do something else. Um, but I think, I like this question that Kristen asked, when she, when she didn't ask questions, she said, with the exception to the hierarchy, I love this idea for those who are single. Um, so that's good. And again, I know that the top three are God, your marriage, and your kids. And if you're not married, you don't have kids. Um, those things, that category can be your friendships and relationships. You know, if you don't have children, you might have spiritual children, somebody you're either mentoring or discipling or just really good friends with. And, um, and so same thing is, uh, applies to them. It's like you can't be a good friend whenever, if you're just not in a healthy place with the Lord sometimes. You can't offer good advice or you can't minister to someone who needs it. And so that would be in that same category. I put that under ministry for us because like we have spiritual children um, beyond our actual family children. Um, and that's, that is in the ministry category for us. Well, when you, when, <laughs> well, when I was in a band, you know, when I was in Flyleaf, this was a challenge in the music industry. You saw it all the time. People's marriages would fall apart. People never saw their kids. And, and you saw a lot of, strife and and you also saw that the greatest moments on tour with these huge rock stars was when somebody brought their kid and everybody played with the baby and somebody brought a homemade plate of cookies and they're like oh my gosh this is amazing so it's interesting that the the joy that comes when actually there's just a moment of prioritizing and that's just it just it's just like a, a lightning bolt hits that industry and they're like wow this is so transformative and something goes off like I remember a light bulb going off in a lot of our crew guys heads whenever um, Jared and Kat first got married and we as a band prioritized making sure they had hotel rooms together and that they they were able to take days off together and nobody bothered them so that they could prioritize their marriage and that was just such a beautiful looking thing that our our crew guys who weren't married to their girlfriends all of a sudden decided to get married <laughs> And it was so cool. And I think, too, when we saw Skillet touring with their kids, it was just so encouraging to us. Yeah. With our kids, to be able to know that we can still have a relationship with them while we say yes to the Lord. And whatever that looks like. Sometimes it means going home and sometimes it means, you know, 
going going on in the road. Yeah. Hi, Riley. I'm just reading some of the comments. I'm sorry. Really good comments in here. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to a couple yeah. who's here with us who have three kids yeah. and have a ministry. I'm interested to hear a different take on this. Yeah. Paul, without getting into a fight right now on camera. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, I'm just interested to hear your take on what we just said and how that, either some of the same things that have happened to you guys or maybe something, the way that you guys have approached that same idea and how you balance it. It's been, I think it's, I think it's on point. Like, I think it's very much the same way, like that hierarchy that you guys talk about. Like, if we mess that up, it, there's a big effect on our family um, and on our relationship. And we've had some, we've had some fun uh, spirited conversations on ministry and marriage um, and that conversation you were talking about the pastors of why don't you speak to me that way why don't you do this because we do yeah, we loosely he does a lot of street ministry um, and just loving on our community and our people and um, you know the people that are out downtown partying and homeless and and he has such a great heart for them and sometimes I'm like, hey, wait, mm -hmm. you know, we've had that conversation early on. It's like, what about me? Like, y you can love these really messy people that are hard to love. And then here I am, like, you know, your wife. And so we've had to work through that a lot um, in trying to find the balance of our relationship with the Lord individually and then our relationship with each other. And we hit 10 years last year and we're like, hey, we survived 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so now we're really looking forward to the next 10. Yeah. But I think it is that, that balance and that hierarchy that you guys were talking about and, and really prioritizing that. And you had a dream. Remember the dream about the, was it shoes in the bedroom or something? About the, how God yeah. prioritizes. I had a dream a couple years ago and we were out doing all the things and um, you know, there's ministry outside of our home, and then we have our home, and, and the Lord showed me in our bedroom, which just happens to be, <laughs> we're dropping sausage and water, that's fun. Um, he showed me in our bedroom, is in the middle of our house, these, this huge pair of shoes, massive pair of shoes, and that we need to put those on first in our bedroom, like with our family, um, before we go out. And that our ministry started there. Our ministry started at home first, you know, with the Lord, but then first with us. And then it branched out into the other rooms in our home, which are our family. And then it branched outside of our mm -hmm. home to the people outside. Um, and it was just very clear, like, there's an order to yeah. that and how we go out. And God, God can't bless. He can't bless what's not in priority or what's not in order. Um because it becomes destructive, right? <laughs> and so if, you know, if I, if we leave, a friend of mine, Brian Morricon, he said, I dare not leave my children fatherless to go minister to the fatherless. <laughs> and that, that just that rocked me, yeah. you know? It's like, that's all, I, I heard that statement, I was like, dang. Like, I can't leave my children fatherless to go minister yeah. to the others, and so it's not a, it's not an either or, but it's, it's making sure that I'm, taking ownership, and stewarding, my like you said, my relationship with the Lord, mm -hmm. my relationship, um, with my wife, and then my family, and then, and all of that's ministry. All of that's ministry, mm -hmm. and then, um, and then out of the overflow, we get to then reach out to our neighbors yeah and those oftentimes sometimes what we want to do is we want to say neighbors way out there and those and those are our neighbors also but what about the neighbors that live next door to us yeah yeah that's a really good point um something i thought of that we can discuss that was interesting when you said that is um there's a scripture that says jesus leaves the 99 to go after the one mm -hmm. um he's talking about being a shepherd and having 90 or 100 sheep, and if one of those sheep is lost, he'll leave the 99 to go after that one sheep. Um, now, obviously, Jesus knows a lot better than I do, but I imagine that he has a perspective 
of those 99 that's stable enough, like Paul was just saying, that I can't leave my children fatherless to go minister to people who are fatherless. You know what I mean? Um, so if Jesus, if Jesus leaves 99 of us to go after one, he's not leaving us. He knows not, he's not leaving us fatherless. He's leaving us in a place where we're safe, that he can go and do that. And I think that goes back to what Maggie was talking about, of like everything birthed out of a certain place. Whatever ministry, job, occupation that you guys have, um, there's, there's always like a heart or a root of it. And um, remembering that, you know, in, in bands, it's funny when you see a band and someone says, oh, they, they, uh, they sold out or they, um, I don't remember the term for it, but basically just saying like they forgot where they came from type thing, you know what I mean? Like just remembering what started. So like we have to constantly remind ourselves why we started Reflect Love back um, and what we want to do with it. And if we always have to keep checking it and say, is it still what we set out to do, what God called us to do? We do this with our music. You know, we're, we've been doing that a lot lately with our music and praying about that. About we're releasing a new album for um, Lacey, uh, Lacey Sturm, the, our rock band. And... Um, getting prophetic words and asking people to pray about that, about what that season looks like. Um, and so anyway, so just to remember the heart of why we started things. And that way when we go out, we're not going out and leaving things behind. If we go out and our kids are having a hard time, we knew that we made a decision in prayer and that God is going to honor that and he's going to take care of those things. Just because you meet trouble doesn't mean you made the wrong decision, you know what I mean? Um, it obviously has you to re recheck your heart to make sure that you did pray about it. But um, I'm kind of tying a bunch of stuff together. Sorry, I'm all over the board. I hope no. you guys. Are, I hope you guys are following what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, there's a there's a scripture where Paul is about to go out, and um, and people are like, "Don't go, don't go," and he's just like, "No, I need to go." And he knows that he needs to go, and he knows he's gonna face mm -hmm. stuff. And whenever the ship breaks apart, and he's like all kinds of things are going crazy. Mm -hmm. He knows they're going to survive because he knows God sent him there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And then we got that. That's what, that's exactly the scripture that I think we, we were thinking of when we went on on our first Theotep tour. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, we know God's sending us and if the bus blows up, then we know that it's part of the plan. And guess what? The bus mm -hmm. blew up. It, it didn't blow fire. up. It just caught on fire. <laughs> oh, I was exaggerating. It Jeez. actually it didn't blow up. It just caught on fire. That was a shine down tour. Oh wait, your bus blew up on a shine down tour? No, when we were touring a shine down. Oh, that's when our bus caught on that's fire. Right, that's right. But anyway, after it caught on fire, somebody showed up and took us to the show. We didn't miss it. <laughs> Those are the weird things that happen when you know that you're sent. It's like it's like you're. We were sitting on the side of the road. And I was like, I wonder what God's going to do now. Because <laughs> it's, it's like an adventure almost. Had. And it's the same thing when like the lights went out at the venue in Atlanta. Was it Atlanta? Mm -hmm. Masquerade. The masquerade. And we were like so excited. because like, You were so excited. We and Stevie both were. <laughs> and, and we were like, oh, what's God going to do? Is he going to cancel the show? Does he have other plans for us? And then turns out we did an acoustic show in the middle of the audience, which was really different something we've only done that one show the one time mm -hmm. and um it was really cool and then the lights came on while we we're playing <laughs> it was pretty sweet so, so you know there's adventures when we say yes that are really we couldn't have made Ashley, up Ashley said i was own. there it was incredible yes, yes you, you were, were. yes you were i remember that i'm just reading some of the comments here so again for the singles um this is exactly what if if you if you if, if you are you know, if God does bring marriage into your future, this it's it's just as important, if not more important, that you get into the habit of making God first and making Him your all and everything now, because there's no better gift to give to your spouse than knowing that you're whole in Christ. And it's it's uh you know I've said this before and I wrote this in the mystery. This is one of the main points about the mystery. Um, was that this idea that if somebody, if we, if somebody, if we try to get somebody else to complete us, we actually end up with less than when we started. You know that the equation. Um, I got this from um, what's the book I, I read about um, codependency. Love is a choice. Yeah, it's, it's called Love is a Choice. <laughs> um, but it's it's not that one plus one 
one plus one doesn't equal, you know, it's not one plus one, it, it equals a whole, a whole, but it's one times one equals a whole. So if you, if you, if you do a half times a half, you get a fourth. So if you're not whole, when you go into a relationship and you both try to, you know, complete the other person, you end up with less than when you started and it's destructive. And that's what I wrote about in the mystery. Um, I was trying to be something that God didn't call me to be in somebody's life. Yeah. And I almost didn't make out of that, that out, out of that to relationship alive. That's good. My, mom, my mom says marriage isn't 50-50, it's 100-100. That's a good one. So when you're single too, and if you learn this, if you learn to find your, you know, there's enough relationships that we have in our single life to teach us this too. Um, you know, whether it's your, your family, your coworkers, you know, your friends okay. <laughs> that, um, when some, a lot of times people will blame um, their their problems with God or religion on other people. Like, well, so I knew this Christian and they did this to me, or I went to church and this church hurt me. And um, but again, God calls us to be whole in Him. He calls us to come to Him for our wholeness. And um, and so this is what this is what He says. He says, you know. I, I, we're made to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. If we are made for that and we don't have him filling us, then it makes sense that we would feel really empty outside of it, you know? So, Well, I thought we could either do the one we just we just posted, or we could do. Smoldering Wicks, good idea. We can yeah. Guitar. We just posted Smoldering Wicks, so we we'll probably do that one. I know that we're planning in June to um, to start over with the Reflect Look Back study. I know a lot of people are um, gonna start Reflect Look Back in June, and so we're kind of gonna gonna kind of go through the um, the messages from each week starting then and we're probably going to put out some lyric videos for the songs at that time so i'll talk about the meaning again with um and and just expound on those those um weekly messages in the study so and you guys we're going to spend some time again um sitting still and letting you just if you have a prayer request to to post it if you have um, something, a lyric or um, a scripture on your heart, then just go ahead and write it in and we'll, uh, all around me, Monica's like, all around me, um, and we'll give, we'll spend a moment just being still with the music and see what the Lord's saying through the song. Thanks for the happy Mother's Day wishes, happy Mother's Day to you guys too. <laughs> Josh wants to get the guitar. <laughs> Justice and mercy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Marriage isn't for everyone because God's plan is different for everyone. That's true. Yeah, and Monica's like, we should write a song right now. We should. Did you hear? Is it a doggy? I know this is going to be sacred on my feet. <laughs> so, um, this song, Smoldering Wicks, is, uh, um, is just about how the little things matter. You know, we, um, we live in the woods and we're in the middle of a bunch of trees and it's amazing to think that you know everything started with just the words of God but then everything just continues to to fill the earth with just seeds and today um, this week my friend Melanie came to visit me and she saw these maple these maple seeds that have 
that when you throw them, they like spin around like a helicopter and like fly mm -hmm. through the air. And she was just really am am amazed by that. But to think that, you know, it all comes out of a seed. And that whole concept is, um, is what, you know, what we were thinking about whenever we were, um, whenever we were writing this song, just because people, people seem to, they seem to neglect that, the concept of the small. I mean, in our society, we don't we don't honor it. We don't honor the, the small things, um, and I think it's a really foolish way to to um, to live to not honor the the value of the small things, <laughs> like this small thing, this small person. You know what I noticed too with my kids is that um, sometimes when they're talking to me, I don't look at them, and sometimes they, it takes me a long time to. For them, especially when I'm busy, for them to um, be able to get my attention, and then I realized, hey, hey, I've, I've called your name four times, Joshua. How come you're not listening to me? And I realized, oh my gosh, I'm teaching him this. <laughs> I'm, and then in the middle of him talking, I'll I'll interrupt what he's saying and I'll say something to somebody else. And then when he does it to me, I'm like, hey, don't interrupt. <laughs> and I realized, wow, he learned that from me. And it's just those small moments that actually impact how our conversations go <laughs> and most of the time what I need to work on is what I'm correcting in him <laughs> I realized that wow. so mm -hmm. so the, those are the seeds that we recognize when if we're listening that actually are growing up in our lives and in our kids lives because where else do they come from they come from the tree you know the tree above them the seeds fall and they come up in our kids lives so we're like okay <laughs> Like okay, God, what, what, how did this grow up in my kid's <laughs> life? <laughs> like, where did this come from? Um, but then also that's true with every prayer we pray, and I think that's one of the things that's super hard is like when a thought comes in, we it's always an opportunity to turn it into a communication with God. All the time, when we have a thought that, that would be worry, that there would be a worry thought or a stress thought or an overwhelmed thought or an angry thought, if the thought comes and it's shifting our mind into a different, you know, something other than peace and something other than joy and something other than hope or faith, then that's a moment to communicate with God, and that communication is a seed that will grow into faith and to shifting your atmosphere and to shifting your way of thinking and. I think those are the deepest revelations is when I intentionally shift my thoughts by, t by um, talking to God and beginning a communication with God in those moments when I normally would get overwhelmed or get angry or get um, sad or whatever if I intentionally go, okay, God, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to start talking to myself about this and talking myself down. I'm going to start talking to you and saying, okay, God, what do you think about this? I'm overwhelmed and this is awful and I can't think of anything good that that I could about this situation what do you think about it and um, that communication turns into revelation and songs and, and communication and deep relationships and things that would have never been there if I hadn't paid attention to that small seed and um, and done it on purpose so those efforts like tonight our dinner was like what do we have what are, what's in our fridge let's eat what's in here <laughs> and that was something that you guys did when we came to your house you pulled out what what was in your fridge and we had a great meal yeah. we was, were really good at that yeah i think that's just an attitude of thankfulness because we can get overwhelmed at what we don't have or we can look at what we do and say thank you for what we do lord bless it and it's always so miraculous the way it works this week I was, or last week, um, it was so funny because I went to an office and, you know, we have, one of our vehicles is an older vehicle that <laughs> I'm kind of ready to be done with. Um, but I went to this place and the available parking spot was between two brand new nice beamers. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I'm going <laughs> to park my old van right between these two cars. And you know, I was like, all right. And there was that like, man, I wish I had this. And then I was like, no, I'm so thankful. And I was like, all right, devil, you're going to show me all the things I want. So I'm going to thank the Lord for what I do have every time. So you're going to hear a lot of thankfulness. And so I would drive past the neighborhood that had these really like 
beautiful, large stucco homes and all that. And I was like, I thank you for our home that is a blessing to our family and has welcomed people in. And like every time there's that I I want and oh, I wish I had this or I wish I had this food or this coffee or this whatever, I was like, okay, well, I'm thankful for the coffee that I do have. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for what's in my fridge now. And um, I remember reading, no, it was a message that I heard um, from someone that was on the Chris Salton blog, but um, a thought was coming in her head or that the enemy would try and um, distract her or discourage her with something. And she says, every time I think about this, I'm going to pray for my friend that's going through this. And it's like, she's going to get a lot of prayer because yeah. she was struggling with that thought. She decided to turn it and say, okay, we're going to pray for this person every time that thought enters my head. Or, and I was like, you know, I'm just going to have thankful for, thankfulness for what I do have mm -hmm. every time the enemy tries to put something in front of me like, oh, don't you wish you had yes. this? It's like, well, you know what? I have great vehicles that have been such a blessing. I've got a great home that has so many blessings within it. And... I've never lacked for anything, even when things were really tough. We still had everything we needed. And so I was like, you know, I'm just going to change my heart to thankfulness every time I get that I want mm -hmm. thing. And it was just a cool flip. I was like, all right, enemy, you're going to try and like, bring jealous of all the things I don't have. I'm like, you're going to hear me thanking the Lord a whole lot more every yeah. time you do that. That's well, so that's, I call, that's warfare. That's, yeah. that's joy fair. Yeah. That's what, that's what, um, that's what Bill Vanderbush calls it, joy fair. Yes. And that's that's exactly what I'm talking about. And that's exactly what he breathes on. Like, he breathes on those moments of thankfulness. I remember when my kids would be screaming at night, all night. They would have, Josh, Josh and her both had night terrors. And whenever they would start that, <laughs> Josh was like, please stop yelling over the children. I would just start praying and praising God and worshiping God and just laughing with God. Like, I would just... Because there's nothing else you can do. You can just be angry and, or you can just start worshiping. Yeah. And I would do that and I felt God fall in the room so powerfully. And those were the most intense moments of praying for my kids I've ever had. And like the more that, that it felt like there was ter there was a, an invitation to be terror terrified or terrorized yeah. <laughs> because of what's happening in my kids. The more I would just press in and say, I know you're good, and I know you hear me, and I know that you're always worth praising, and I know that you love my kid, and I know that you love me, and I know that you're here with me, and I know you hear every cry, and you're good, and you're you're watching, and just pressing in in a joy fair moment was like the most powerful thing I've ever experienced. Like yeah. people act crazy in those moments, and we can de devolve into this crazy state that makes sense. Or we can just be crazy in the other direction yeah, the and be other like, yeah. I'm just going to just start praising God and yeah. being weird. And you're, be you know, like, and my husband's like, can you please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to sleep. Why are you yelling? It's <laughs> not a quiet prayer. <laughs> well, when the kids are screaming out right. loud. She's even. screaming louder. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody probably, if you listen to Flat Life, you know I can be louder than screaming. But the screaming's on purpose. Right. <laughs> it's a joy fair, but that's exactly what it is. It doesn't have to be loud screaming. It just has to be a shift of your thinking. And sometimes it takes that persistence of shift before you 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 step into that in your feelings or yeah. you know your behavior, like you behave your way uh -huh. to that. We had our girls um, for all of a sudden they were like scared of the dark. And we're like, you've slept in pitch black since the day you were born. Like, we've never done night lights. We've never... And they're like, I'm afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of the dark. And I was like, no, you're not. You know? And so we started saying, well, you're not afraid of the dark, and there's nothing to be afraid of, and you're fine, and all these things. And a good friend of ours and a mentor, she said, Maggie, what's the opposite of fear? She said, it's faith. And she said, water what you want to grow. And so we started having the girls say, I have great faith. When they would go to bed, I have great faith. I'm brave. I have great faith. And within a couple of days, there was no more talk of this fear of the dark because they watered their faith and they grew their faith, which was the opposite. And it made sense to logically tell them why there's no reason to be afraid of the dark and you slept in the dark since you were born and all these things. And she was like, water what you want to grow. And I was telling a friend of ours that, you know, I was like, we get so focused on the weeds and we're like, oh, there's weeds and there's weeds and there's weeds and there's weeds. And, there's weeds. and it's like, but if we water the flowers, the flowers will grow bigger yeah. and we won't notice the weeds. 
anymore. <laughs> and so it's that, you know, to a lot of people, I'm like, water what you want to grow because there's always that balance of they're both here. You know, there's opportunity for fear and there's opportunity for faith. Let's water this one and watch this one grow and overtake this. Okay. And it was so tangible to see with our kids, with our girls. It was incredible to see, like, okay, that feels good and it should be the right thing to do. But, like, there was a tangible result wow. when we did that. And it was, and they had freedom yeah. in that. So it was just cool. <laughs> and, you know, that's so cool because you have three girls. Yeah. And my faith, I love seeing girls empowered in faith. And, and like, we were on a walk with Lila today, and she found a stone. And she said, she threw it in the air, and she goes, die, Goliath. <laughs> oh, my, yeah, die, Goliath. That sounds like a rock song, a metal song yeah. right there. Die, Goliath. That's right. That's the good chorus. <laughs> past my singing in the wrong key and then and we'll get there. It's fun to write songs live because it shows how humiliating the process is and everybody's all like like you know cheering for you and thinking you're great but they don't see the Songwriting. Um, you believe in me, don't you, Atticus? <laughs> Alright, um, hey, two things about Smoldering Wicks. I was looking at the chord chart, and uh, either I have a, a old copy, but the bridge chords are wrong on here. Um, if you're listening and you want to play the song, the bridge is C sharp minor, A, E major, B major. Um, I don't know if this is an old version, but that's wrong on there, so. This song is called Smoldering Wicks. Lost 12 and gained 12 more. Also, too, um, we just released a music video for the song. So if you haven't seen it after we're done singing it and we sign off, go check it out on like YouTube. What you're seeing here. Here we go. You gonna play guitar with me? Accept the humblest 
God, your kingdom is an upside down, inside out kingdom, Lord. It's so different from the way that the world works, Lord. And we just thank you, Father, that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. We thank you that your ways confound the wise, Lord. You're, you're so amazing in the way you do things. You put everything inside the tiniest the tiniest beginnings, God. Your word says don't despise small beginnings, Lord. And I thank you for the greatness that's in these small moments, Lord, of just getting to say yes to you. <laughs> and do we just worship you and praise you, God, even in the small things, God? Because we recognize, Lord, that the small things aren't small to you. You're every size, Lord. You humble yourself, you humbled yourself, and you became a, a human, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for your plan that's just amazing, Lord. And you don't waste anything, and you see it all. From the microcosms to the, to the cosmos, Father. You see it all, God. You see every shift of our thinking. You see every shift of our eyes. You see every tiny longing in our heart, God. You know the, the, the faintest dreams we have. You see us, God. And you don't look away. And you believe for us, God. You believe in us just and, and you you tell you call us to greatness. You call us to rise above. You call us to answer to you. You call us to turn our face towards yours, God, and to see your love for us, God. You call us to come into your presence. You call us to gaze on you, Father, and become like you. To be your kids. To be great in the earth. To shine with your love and your light. To say yes every time. Every time we hear your name. To hear your voice, God, to say yes. So God, I just pray for yeses in the hearts of everybody listening tonight, God. And everybody who will listen, I pray for the yes to grow big and to grow bold and to grow full of faith. That we would say yes to you, Lord. We would follow you wherever you lead us. We would yield to your spirit and we would go wherever you send us. And we would... Um, we would we would go on that adventure with you, Lord. I thank you that you're for eternal perspective, Father. Amen. Hi, Tommy. I love you, Jesus. I see you blowing up on there. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to our Sunday live stream. Thank you to Paul and Maggie sharing some insight from their family. Um, we uh, are gonna eat some pizza, right? Yeah. I think so. Sure. Sounds good. Um, do me a favor, guys. Go to YouTube and watch the video for Smoldering Wicks. Um, if you don't have the Reflect Love Back album, download it. And what else? Oh, t-shirt bundle. I don't know if you saw that. Um, we just released the Reflect Love Back t-shirt, which helps fund all the stuff we're doing for live streams and for more videos for you guys. So if you uh, want to pick up the t-shirt, you can. If you want to bundle it, I think you get like a t-shirt, the album, a um, artwork that was done for the Lacey's Book of Return, and a journal, a blank journal, for like $35, which is a great deal. So check those things out right now. Thank you guys for tuning in. I love you. Hope everyone has a great week. Say goodbye. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to leave you with this. Um, wait for it. <laughs> Come on, internet connection. Don't make me look like a fool. <laughs> well. Mm, okay. Well, it's not working. <laughs> We try to become new. Okay, bye this time.